Okay, first we have the concept of orthogonal. Orthogonal means perpendicular, same. They, they are synonymous uh, in geometry. So, orthogonal, same thing as perpendicular. Um, and the symbol that we use for perpendicular is a T upside down. Um, so I guess we can use this T upside down. So that means also uh, perpendicular orthogonal. And for vectors, we say that two vectors are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal if their dot product is zero. So in this case, for instance, quick example, um, one, um, two, three is orthogonal to a, well, one, two, can I use one, two? Then their dot product would be that far, five, hmm. I'm thinking if we can use one and two and then something else, and will that cause it to be orthogonal? Uh, so one, two, blank, can we do that? Well, if the dot product was gonna be zero, we would have, so, so let's pretend that is a Z that is unknown. Uh, so their dot product would be one times one, which is one, plus two times two, which is four, plus three times blank, three times blank, um, would have to be equal to zero. Can we solve that equation for blank? And it looks like we can because we move the five to the other side of the equation, we divide by three. So negative five thirds seems to do it. Negative five thirds. Um, so that is interesting, negative five thirds. Um, but let's double check. So if we multiply those two vectors, one times one is one, two times two is four, and then three times negative five thirds. Um, so let, let me just write it here. One plus four plus three times negative five thirds. Well, the threes cancel, so we end up with negative five, and one plus four is five. So sure enough, we end up with zero, it checks. So those two vectors are perfectly 100% orthogonal. So they, they meet, well, I don't know if they meet, but they, they are a 90 degree angle. Now, when we say that two vectors are a 90 degree angle, um, the vectors don't necessarily have to be touching each other. So, so one vector could be here, the other vector could be anywhere else. But what we mean when we say that they are a 90 degree angle is if we extend the line, if we, if we look at the line that contains the vector, and then the line that contains the other vector, the two vectors are gonna meet at 90 degree. Well, pretend that angle in between is 90 degrees. So if, if those two are perpendicular, then they're gonna meet at 90 degree angle. All right. It is very desirable to be able to split spaces into orthogonal subspaces. Um, but, okay. But there's more to this, this idea of orthogonal. Uh, there's a couple other things we, we need to, to talk about. Uh, first of all, zero, zero, zero is always orthogonal to any other vector. So the vector um, zero, zero, zero is orthogonal to any other vector V. It doesn't matter what you put in here. So X, Y, Z, Y, because when we do the dot product, we, we're gonna end up with zero plus zero plus zero, which is gonna be zero. And so there, because this has zeros all over, again, this will be perpendicular, orthogonal to any other vector. And this is true whether we have two coordinates, three coordinates, four coordinates, five coordinates, it doesn't matter. So zero is always orthogonal to any other vector. Um, now, two sets could be said to be orthogonal. So let's say, as an example, well, 
So, so let's let's do this example. No, not an example yet. Uh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, um, two sets um, U and V are orthogonal. Um, if they are non-empty and little u is orthogonal to little v for all u in u and little v in v. So that symbol means in v and we, we mean all. So for any, if you grab a com, uh, an element from here, a random element from u, and a random element from V, and you do the that product, we're gonna get zero. That's what orthogonal sets mean. So for instance, um, now here we, we have the example. Consider U to be um, the elements of the form. Well, this is an easy one, um, X zero, such that X is a real number. And V uh, be equal to the set zero y such that y is a real number. So if you grab any element from here, any generic element from there, um, so then it is going to look like x zero. Any element from here is going to look like zero y x zero multiply that product with zero y. Well, that's going to give us x times zero plus zero times y. And of course that is zero plus zero, which is zero. So u, the set u is perpendicular orthogonal to the set v. Furthermore, um, we can define the, okay, furthermore, this is a subspace of r squared A, U and V are each subspaces of R squared. So not only they're sets, they're subspaces. Um, and every element, now, wait, wait a minute, back up, back up a little bit. Um, However, the, their union is not all of R squared. Yep. Yep. There you. Yep. Um, note U union V is not R squared. Why not? Now, whenever we, we say that a set is not equal to another, and especially when um, this is contained in here. To show that they're not equal, what we have to do is expose one element that is in this set which does not belong to that set. Yeah. So for instance, one one is not in the union. The union means all the elements that are here or here, or in both, such as zero zero is in both. Um, but one one, yeah. So no, this is not all of all of R squared. Why not? So let's answer. Let's ask the question. Why not? Question mark. Um, a, so why they're not equal? That's what I'm asking. Uh, pick one num one vector, which you think is going to be here but not there, and and that's where we have to be a little creative. Um, so this is not a matter of finding a formula. It is about a matter of being a little creative and, and thinking of a vector that is here that is not here. So I'm thinking, well, you cannot have a zero. Um, so we have to have a number there. And you cannot not have zero uh, as first coordinate either. So it has to have a number other than zero on the first coordinate and on the second coordinate. So one, one will do, but somebody else could say, hey, can five, six do it? 
Sure, why not? As long as you don't have zero in neither one of the two coordinates. So why not? Okay. Um, so here I'm going to put a parenthesis indicating we use our creativity uh, to come up with a vector that is in R squared, but we suspect is not in U nor V. Okay, so I'm just explaining what, what we are doing here. And I'm thinking one, one, but if you thought one, two, well, let's see. So consider the vector. Now I'm thinking that vector, I'm thinking a vector uh, one, two. Okay. And again, we have to use some creativity. Um, okay. So one, two, the, the first claim we want to state is that one, two is not in you. So that's a symbol for belongs cross that is not in you. Why not? Well, if it was, hmm, um, for if it was, then um, one, two would be equal to X, O. Why X, O? Because that's how we define U. Now, that means that so a two would have to be equal to zero. Two would be equal to zero because matrices are, or vectors for that matter, are equal when, when exactly every coordinate matches the other coordinate. So two equals zero, a contradiction, comma. Uh, now, let's remember the symbol for contradiction. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but one of the, the symbols we use is two arrows uh, pointing to each other horizontally. So that means contradiction. And so, so that means that the premise here for if it was, if this was an element in here, then we would have that two is equal to zero, which is a contradiction. So that premise that if it was is false, implying that this is true. Likewise, comma, if one, two was in V, then um, one, two, um, now here I, I forgot to mention, one, two would be equal to X zero uh, for some real x because we need to do that here one two would be equal to zero y y zero y because that is the way we define v zero y um for some y for some real y but that means that don't never mind the y because y could be two that is not a problem what matters is that that would imply that one is equal to zero so one equals zero that's an implication of this equation which is a contradiction now here we have to to, to learn how to write proofs arguments the R, the statement we're making is this. This is the, 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 the statement. This is, this element is not, this vector is not in U. Why not? Because if it was, we come up with a contradiction. Now here, I'm stating that if this element is in V, then we end up at a, with a contradiction, but I haven't written a conclusion yet. Here, the, the, the conclusion was written early. Now I'm gonna write the conclusion last. 
So, or consequently. Are you there? Are you there? Um, Are you there? Are you there? Consequently, um, one, two is not in V. So this is the conclusion, or is not in V. Okay, so if an, a vector is not in U and it is not in V, then certainly the vector is not in the union. Thus, one, two is not in U union V. Watch out, this union symbol is not is not a U. It looks like a U, but it's not a U. The, the U actually has a stick coming down uh, on the right of it. This symbol is just, is just an arch and uh, opening up. And um, if this element, which is clearly in R squared, is not in the union, then what we, the, con the final conclusion we can arrive to is that um, U union V is not all of R squared. Okay. Um, so what we have done is found two spaces. So, so there's R squared, let's see, R squared. U is this line, that's U. V is this line, that's V. Okay, the entire line is V. They intersect at the origin. They do have a, a point in common. But for instance, one, two is not on U and it's not on V. It's in neither of the two. So there's a lot of stuff in between. However, every element on, the, on R squared is, can be written as the sum of an element in U plus an element in V. So one, two, even though one, two, is not in the union. Uh, let me write down what I'm, I'm saying. So even though one, two is not in U union V comma, one, two can be written as one, zero plus zero, two. One, zero is in U and zero two is in V. So this vector plus this vector, so we can just add them together. This plus this gives us one, two, yeah. So even though they do, they do not, the, the union is not of all the real numbers, all of R squared can be written as an element in U plus an element in V, yeah. So in a way, we can say that R squared is U plus, I'm going to put plus in quotation marks for now, plus V, because the addition of sets doesn't quite make sense. We can add numbers, you know, two plus two. We can add vectors, no problem. But adding sets is kind of weird. We haven't quite uh, come up with this. Let's give a meaning actually to this. So adding vectors, rather adding sets in particular, subspaces means, um, okay, so, so let's give it a meaning. Um, so this is a definition. If uh, U and V are subspaces of, or subsets, for that matter, of W. So we need to have a, a main vector space and those two are inside of that vector space. Okay. Um, then U plus V, which doesn't make sense initially because we can add numbers, we can add vectors. Adding sets, well, we know how to, make the union of sets, but adding sets as a plus, as an addition doesn't make sense. So we're gonna give it a meaning right now. It is the set of all the little u's plus little v's such that um, u is in u 
and little v is in v. And one of the points I want to drive in right now is that u plus v is, note that u plus v, so u, the, the actual, that's, a, that's supposed to be a u plus v, is indeed r squared, even though the union is not r squared, because we can expose at least one element for which the, the union is not equal to r squared. However, as we explained right here, one, two can easily be written as an element from u plus an element of v. Now, we can do that with other, other spaces. I'm gonna come back to, to example one, but I just wanna show you example two. So if you have, this, so this is a second example, u. And let's say we have this other v. Let me just double check something. Um, yes, I'm taping. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I get paranoid when I'm writing things like this or, or, or doing a lesson, taping a lesson, lesson because sometimes I, I'm, I could forget that I'm taping it and then I'm just talking to nobody um, for no good reason. Anyway, so those two, which I purposely didn't put perpendicular. So for instance, this could be, um, so, so you could be the set of all the um, XO, such that X is a real number. Um, and then V could be all the elements uh, of the form uh, one, two. So one, two times, it doesn't matter what letter we use, but I, uh, Y such that Y is a real number. Okay, so this is a generator. Pretend this is, this is the origin, zero, zero. Hey, <laughs> excuse me. And then we go through one, two, one, two. Yep, one, two. And then we have this, um, this complete line. Now, again, the union of this U and, and V, U union V is not all of R squared. Now, one, two does belong to V, but we can find another vector, say one, three, which would be above, that does not belong to V, does not belong to U. So it doesn't belong to the union, um, comma, for example, um, one, three is not in U nor in V. Now, this is, this is true, but I would have to, if I really want to show or demonstrate, we would have to develop this. We would have to say, why not? just like we did back here when, when we had the other two, the one and two. In example one, we elaborated on why one, two was not on U nor on V. So I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of that, but if we wanted to show it, we would have to do that. This element here is zero, zero, okay. Now, can we form one, three using an element from U plus an element from V? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, so the question is, can we, um, actually, the better way to write the question is, is R squared equal to U plus V? So the union is not all of R squared. R squared is everything, the whole plane. But so the union is not, but can we write elements, say this one, which would be above one, three, uh, one, three. Can we write that as a sum of a vector here plus a, ve plus a vector here? Uh, the answer is yes, we can go here and then come back to it it's because this is the, we don't have to go in the forward direction, we can go in the left direction. So we can climb up to here and then come back. Uh, by then we will have gone past the point on the right. So if we go one and a half, we will reach the three. 
but then we have to come back one unit. So just by pure geometry, I can sort of tell, let's see, so one, three, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, should be one and a half or 1.5, um, one, two, but then we will have to come back one unit. Um, I, have, I think I have to, to fix that. Um, one, zero. By the way, this is the same thing as x times one, zero. So one, zero is the generator of this space. Um, I think I have to fix that because this would give us 1.53. So I get the three that I wanted, but I need to come back, but I need a one here. So I need to subtract a half instead, minus a half. There we go. That will work because then we would have minus, uh, it depends how you want to write it, but let's write it as a plus, I guess. Uh, negative one half um, and zero. So that changes the 1.5 down to one. And then three plus zero is three. Yep. So there is a linear combination. Which linear combination? 1.5, I prefer fractions. So three halves and negative one half. Uh, it depends which one you, you want to do first. Uh, since this is you, I guess this one would have to go first. And then this one would have to be second, but that will work. That will for sure give us the point one, three using a combination of those two. Not only that, the combination is unique. Unique combinations are desirable in general. Um, so, so what is the conclusion? I, I don't, I don't want to use a new page yet. The conclusion is that R squared is equal to u plus v. In other words, you can, we can always write one element. Well, I haven't proven it yet. I only gave one example. That doesn't mean that it works for every element, um, which brings me to the idea of, of how to prove things in general. But, but let's just say that um, this sort of convinces this example that r squared can be written as the sum of this u and this v. Now let's look at the generators, one, zero, and one, two. What is their dot product? So we're still in example two. Um, one, zero, and one, two. Their dot product is gonna be one times one is one, zero plus two is, rather zero times two is two, plus zero, one, which is not equal to zero. That means that one, O is not perpendicular to one, two, not perpendicular. And the picture shows it. There is no 90 degree. You, you're probably thinking, um, well, didn't you already know that? Look at the picture. Sure. But we eventually we want to work with this definition. This is going to be our working definition of perpendicular, not the picture itself. All right. So what if they're not perpendicular? It is not desirable in general, especially in physics. Um, we want to decompose our spaces into subspaces that are perpendicular and those are not perpendicular. So that is the main thing. Uh, that's why this particular example is desirable because the two subspaces are perpendicular. Now, perpendicular doesn't necessarily mean vertical and horizontal, because you can say, okay, let's stay with that V. Can we find a subspace that is perpendicular? And the answer is no problem. So example three, and we will, we will do that oftentimes. In fact, it is, it is gonna be important and it's gonna be even more messy when we have higher dimensions. So let's say you have this V, which is generated by, oops, I meant x, one, two, such that x is a real number. All right, so there is, can we find another space that is perpendicular to it? And the answer is no problem. So the slope here is two, because if you go run one and rise of two, the slope is two. The slope of the opposite reciprocal, or the, the slope corresponding to to the perpendicular will have to be opposite reciprocal. So 
So again, one over up to slope is two. So what is the opposite reciprocal? Negative one over two. So we want, um, let me write it over here, m equals negative one over two. Now the negative could go either way. Um, it can go on the numerator or it can go on the denominator. Of course, it cannot go in both because then we will have negative over negative, which is positive. Um, but one of the two, so that, that could be thought of as um, rise of one and run of negative two. So we would be going to the left or you can go run of two and rise of negative one down. Either one is gonna work. So we want, I'm gonna use this one, uh, rise of negative one, and the rise is the y value with a run of two. Such that y is a real number. So, and I don't have to use y, I, I'm just using two numbers. So, so if we choose u to be this guy, that would be perfectly perpendicular. In fact, you can multiply those two. One times two is two. Two times negative one is negative two. Add them together, we get zero. Yep, and we end up with this guy. So if you go one, um, run, yeah, two over, and then one down, we will end up with this beautifully perpendicular subspace. They will meet at zero, zero. And then their union is not all of R squared, but if we add elements of this space with elements of that space, we will be able to fill in the entire plane. Okay, so we want perpendicular subspaces that complement each other. By the way, they complement each other because the, when the, we add them together as spaces, we will end up with the entire space R squared. So they complement each other. And they are perpendicular. That is also very, very desirable, especially in physics. Okay. So this gets more messy when, you, when we have three dimensions. So that was in two dimensions, R cubed now. So the examples we did were in two dimensions. Now, if we are in R cube, we have um, more, cons more cases. See, in R squared, the only proper subspaces are um, a line, and that's it. So let me back up a little bit. Let, let's go back to, to R squared. Yeah, so in R squared, yeah. What are the only subspaces? By the way, um, I want to, to make sure we understand R squared is a subspace of itself. So when, whenever we say subspace, it doesn't mean that it is a proper subspace. If we want to say that it is inside of R, something is inside of R squared, but it is not all of R squared, please don't just say sub squared, I mean subspace, say proper subspace. Otherwise, um, the, the naming we are using is incorrect or the adjective is incorrect. Um, so the only subspaces are straight lines. The only proper subspaces, actually non-trivial sub, okay, so, so, let me, so let me write this down. So the only um, proper non-trivial, oops, non-trivial, so that means non-zero subspaces of R squared, R lines. So proper means not all of R squared, non-trivial means non-zero. So they're just lines, lines through zero. Okay. So if, if, if we are given any line, it's easy to come up with, it's complement, it's orthogonal complement. Now we mean orthogonal complement. You, you just find the line that is perpendicular, voila, you're set. Okay, now if we have R cubed, what are the proper non-trivial subspaces? Okay, so if the 
proper, non-trivial, so not just the, because zero by itself is a subspace, but we're, that, that would be a tr what I would call a trivial subspace. So the proper non-trivial, you know what, let's be even more specific, let's call them non-zero. non-zero subspaces are lines and planes. Okay. So if we are in three dimensions, so pretend we're in three, 3D, and you're given a line, what is the orthogonal complement to it? Ah, the orthogonal complement is gonna be a plane that and they intersect at zero 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 okay and the other way around if you so given a line comma it's orthogonal complement is that plane, which one? This one, all right? And then we have the, the reverse order, given a plane. So if you start with, if, if, if I give you a plane, what is its orthogonal complement? Well, the orthogonal complement is gonna be the line through the plane that is perfectly at 90 degrees. And this is also at 90 degrees and it goes through the origin. So they intersect at the origin. Okay, so I guess this is an, another picture. Given a plane, comma, given a plane, it's orthogonal complement is a line and it's going to be a line through zero 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 and it is going to be at perfectly 90 degrees uh, relative to the plane so let's do a couple of examples of that um, example four if i'm not mistaken so example four um, so how am I going to give you a plane? Well, okay, so let's start with the, with the second scenario. We're going to be given a plane. We got to find the line. Now, so I'm probably going to give you generators. So let you be, um, and I'm just going to come up with uh, X, so a generator could be one, two, three, plus Y, another generator would be um, four, five, six. I want to use four, five, six, but I want to make sure they're not, um, that they are not, well, let's, we'll find out. Four, five, six. So I just came up with two. I'm hoping they're linearly independent, that there is no redundancy. I don't think there is because, if, if they were linearly dependent, if I wanted to get four from one, I would have to multiply one times four, that's fine. But then two would have to be multiplied by four, which also, which would give us eight. So right there it fails. Those two guys are not linearly independent. No, I, 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 I meant they're not linearly dependent. That's what I meant to say. Because if they were, one would be a scalar multiple of the other such that x, y are real numbers. Okay, so this is u. u is a set. Can we, f and that is a plane, that creates a plane. We have two generators, two dimensions. So this vector, let's call it u1, and this is a u2. Okay, so they are somewhere in this space there. 
and they don't they're not necessarily at 90 degree angle so who knows what angle they are but they form a plane that goes through them the key now is to find the line that goes through the origin 90 degrees from the plane okay so all, what we need is one non-zero vector that does that and then we'll create the entire line just with one vector so i want to solve this equation now this vector has to be perpendicular to those two so we want we want x y z such that Uh, now, the dot product between this and this, so the dot product between those two is zero, and the dot product between those two is zero, as well, at the same time. And that's going to give us this. And again, those two vectors are not necessarily at 90 degree angles. They're, they're maybe very, very close to each other. Who knows? And one was, is probably going to be way longer than the other. All right. So let's just set up the equation. So if the dot product of those two is equal to zero, that means that one X plus two Y plus three Z is equal to zero. Doesn't that look familiar? One X plus two Y plus three Z is equal to zero. And that four X plus five Y plus six Z is equal to zero, the dot product. Uh, 4x plus 5y plus 6z is equal to zero. Well, that is the same thing as solving the equation, the matrix equation. One, two, three, four, five, six, x, y, z equals zero, zero, which makes sense. Two by three, three by one. The product is two by one, two by one. So that system of equations is exactly the same thing as that. So we are really looking, when we look at this equation, and if this was the matrix A, we're looking at the null space of A. All the vectors, when multiplied to the right, give us zero, the zero vector. So those are the null space. Yeah. So that's what we are looking for. This is gonna be the null space of the matrix made up. Oh, this is interesting, the rows. So we started here with columns, but we're writing rows. So yeah, that is, that is an interesting thing that is developing here. Um, if, see, I, I'm gonna actually change the notation a little bit. Um, because we, um, I don't know necessarily. If you combine those two into one matrix, a three by two matrix, this would be the transpose of the matrix. So just keep your, keep your dogs straight because they can become, uh, you know, out of place and we can be confusing the matrix with the transpose very easily. So I'm, I'm not gonna change it right now, but, but think, you know, this column and this column. Yeah, that is interesting. Now have become rows. Oh, and by the way, the space generated, this is super duper important. The space generated by those rows makes this plane. That is very, in, that is super duper important. The space generated by the two rows, which are those two, make up the, the plane. The null space makes up the orthogonal complement of that plane. That is, that is always gonna be the case. Okay, let's start solving. Um, we, can, we can subtract, uh, so, so if we just look at the matrix A, I'm gonna copy it down one, four, two, five, three, six. Uh, we can take um, the first row, multiply it by four and subtract it from the second row. So row two minus four times row one. I guess I'm gonna write it underneath and we're gonna end up with one, two, three. Uh, four minus four is zero. Five minus eight, 
negative 3, 6 minus 12, negative 6, and then we can multiply this row, the second row, by negative 1 third, negative 1 third times the second row is going to give us um, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, and then we can subtract uh, from the first row twice the second row, and that's going to give us 1, 0, negative 1, because 3 minus 4 is negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So we have a free variable, which will be z in this case. z is the free variable. Uh, and what this, well, when we multiply back with x, y, and z, and we get 0, 0, what this says, because we did a whole bunch of row operations, which are equivalent to manipulating or eliminating um, using um, x, y, and z. And so we end up with x minus z, x minus z equal to zero, and then y plus two z equal to, y plus two z equal to zero as well. And that is telling us that x is equal to the opposite of z, y is equal to the opposite of two times z. So, when we solve this equation, x, y, z is equal to negative z for the x, negative 2z for the y, and then z is equal to z. We may factor z out. And we have negative 1, negative 2, 1. Okay. So, this line is the vector and z is just an, an arbitrary constant. Oftentimes, once we get to this point, we don't have to stay with z. You can just label it as t. So, so v, which would be, if this is u, and this is v, v is really the space generated by negative 1, negative 2, 1. Negative 1, negative 2, 1. Well, times t, such that t is any real number. So, th so there's going to be, now mind, I don't know whether this is poking through on this side or on the other side. I don't know where the, how the picture is oriented. What I know is that it's going to go through the origin at a 90 degree angle and either on this side or on the other side. I, again, I don't know which, which orientation we have, but we're going to have so again, this is the origin. We're going to have the point negative 1, negative 2, 1. Negative 1, negative 2, 1 here. Now again, I don't know where the x and the y axis, I'm, I'm not concerned about that at this point. Um, what I do know is that it's going to poke through the, this vector is going to go starting with 0, 0, 0. It's going to end up in here, 90 degree angle and perfectly perpendicular which is the same thing as 90 degree angle with this plane. And this plane is generated by the vectors one, two, three. So maybe this is one, two, three. And maybe this one is four, five, six. What I mean by that is that the picture is not completely accurate. So the angles between those two are not gonna be the same or the lengths are not gonna be correct. But what I do know is that we're gonna have a 90 degree angle. In fact, one way to check is take this vector negative 1, negative 2, 1, and mul that multiplied with this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so we get uh, negative 1, negative 4, what the, that's a good thing we're checking. Negative 1, negative 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. What the, 
That's not supposed to happen. Hmm. Mm, it's a good thing I'm checking. Negative one, negative two, positive one. Negative one, negative two, positive one. And then we have one, two, three. Boy, my claim is falling apart right now because if I claim that those two are perpendicular, well, their dot product be better be zero. And here, let, let me finish this. So negative one, negative four, and positive three, that doesn't seem to add up. If, if we had a positive one, it would. Oh, barnacles, here it is. Um, we had X minus Z, and then when I move this over, we should have plus Z. Whoa, you cannot see, but I was almost, um, I, was, I was getting a little bit very nervous. Okay, so now we, it works. One, so this is really one. Let me fix that in the picture. Not like it matters, but this should be one. So one negative two, one. Whoa, okay. So one times one is positive one. There we go. Negative four and positive three, sure enough, zero. It checks. Well, it always pays to double check. One, negative two, one. And now I'm going to put four, five, six, and it better work. Okay, so four minus 10 plus six. It works. Good. So the complement. The orthogonal complement to this U will be this V. Excellent. So you are given two vectors that are linearly independent and we're finding one vector. And, and notice, by the way, when we put this into matrix notation, the space generated by the rows is that one and the space generated by 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 this vector is the null space of this matrix so we're beginning to relate null spaces and row spaces together okay so what if we're given only one vector uh, example five Okay, so let u be equal to just one vector, um, one, two, three. So uh, t times one, two, three, such that t is any real number. So this is just a line through the origin with direction one, two, three. Okay, so there's a line. And there's the origin, through the origin. There's a, a line. Okay, this is u. Now we want to find its complement. So its complement is going to be the plane through the origin that is perfectly perpendicular to you. So find orthogonal because finding a, a, a non-orthogonal complement is easy. All you have to do is find two more vectors that are non-linearly independent just like an example two. Yeah, so there's U. If I wanted to find a complement, no problem. Just, I mean, most of the numbers you're gonna use are gonna be not on this line. So just make sure you're not on the line and voila, you're all set. But this is not orthogonal. So finding an orthogonal vector is a little more tricky. This, so can we find a plane through the origin that, does, that is not containing the, this line? That is reasonably easy. All you have to do is find two more vectors that are linearly independent to this one, and you're set. You know, you can do one, two, four, one, two. No, we will have to change the two. So if you do one, two, four, and maybe one, three, three, those two are gonna be linearly independent. 
And so finding any plane at any angle, no problem. Just kind of, you can just produce one like almost at random. What is difficult is to find that is one that is perfectly uh, um, 90 degree orthogonal to that. So find orthogonal a supplement or complement to you. All right, so, and let's label that as V. Okay, so we want all the vectors that are orthogonal to this vector, which is a generator. So we want all X, Y, Z such that, uh, so ortho what does orthogonal mean? I know 90 degrees, but let's step a little by little away from that. Orthogonal means that the dot product is equal to zero. That's what orthogonal is gonna to mean to us. So that means one times X plus two times Y plus three times Z is zero. So I'm gonna write it down actually. One, two, three dotted X, Y, Z. The dot product has to be zero. That's what orthogonal means. Okay, so we want all the vectors that are orthogonal to this direction. And the direction is given by one to three. Well, that means that one X plus two Y plus three Z is equal to zero. Now we can rewrite this as a matrix equation. One, two, three, X, Y, Z equals, so rho, so this is a one by three, this is a three by one. So the answer is gonna be one by one. Okay, so we end up with zero. Although we identify this with zero. I did not put equal, mind. Anyway, because this is a multiplication of matrices. Um, well, as a matrix, if we row reduce it, there is no other row to reduce this with. So that means we got already our pivot of one and we got two free variables, two free variables. Whoa, two free variables. And then one variable that is gonna depend on those two, okay? So, if we look at this x plus two y plus three z, that already tells us equal to zero, that already tells us that x is gonna be, so there's not much work to do here. X will be negative two y minus three z. So, x, y, z will be, Okay, so X is negative two Y minus three Z. Y is free, so is Z. When we are talking about null spaces. Oh, by the way, that's the other thing I, I forgot to link here. We're looking for the null space. So this equation means that we want null space of the matrix a and pretend that's the matrix A. And by the way, the row of that matrix generates this vector. And the null space is gonna be the orthogonal complement. Okay. Now let's take this apart. Let's, um, this is the same thing as negative two Y and Y. So I'm just, initially splitting this into y's and z's, negative three z, no z in the second coordinate, and yes, z on the last coordinate. Here there's no y, so that's why we put zero, rather no, yeah, there's no y in here, so that's why we put zero. And then we can factor out the y and have negative two, one, o, oh, and we can factor the z and have negative three, O, one. Okay, so 
So there, there's, those are the generators of the null space. So if we're looking for the, we, and the null space of the matrix, which is the same thing as finding this plane. See, this plane requires two vectors, one vector. And again, I don't know how this is um, oriented. You know, I don't know if this plane is gonna sit here. And ultimately we don't necessarily care what we know is that there's gonna be one vector here, uh, negative two, one, zero. And this is not vertical necessarily, I just tried to do it sort of random. Negative two, uh, one, zero. So there's our vector. And then another vector, negative three, zero, one. Uh, doesn't matter which way, but not on the same line. Negative three, zero, one, there. And those two vectors, now, they themselves may not be mutually perpendicular. In fact, they're not. If we do the dot product, it's easy to tell we're not gonna get zero. We're gonna get positive six. But never mind that. What is important right now is that those two generate this plane, which is the orthogonal complement to that one. Now, before I actually write down the final answer, I want to double check. Is this, because remember I made a mistake on the, on, the, on the previous example, is this orthogonal to one, two, three? Well, let's, let's check. Negative two, one, O, oh. one, two, three. It's gotta be orthogonal, otherwise something is wrong. So we get negative two plus two plus zero. Checks, well, that's equal to zero, checks. Then we gotta put negative three, zero, one, One, two, three, same vector. Mm, negative three, zero, three equals zero checks. All right, so we're good. So the orthogonal complement or perpendicular, same thing, complement. of u is v, which is, and you don't have to necessarily use y and z. You can use two letters, um, a um, negative two, one, o oh, plus b times negative three, o oh, one, such that a, b are real numbers. So this is the set of all the combinations of those two vectors, we got it. We're good. All right. So when we have, so pretend we have a matrix that is a generic matrix. Okay, so this picture is gonna be large. So, so I'm trying to think, okay. So pretend you got a matrix that is M by N. So M rows, N columns. There are two spaces that are related to this matrix. There's gonna be an R N and R M. Of course, if we got a square matrix, they're the same space. But even so, the matrix is gonna split the space or the spaces into two parts. Yeah, so pretend we got, this is our N. So this is like an N dimensional space. Now we're gonna split it into two parts. One part is gonna be the null space of the matrix A. So pretend that is the matrix A. So the null space is gonna take one part. Perpendicular to that, there is gonna be another part which is gonna be the complement, and that is gonna be the space generated by the rows. So whatever rows, how many, as many rows as we have, that's gonna generate a space, and that space is gonna be perfectly complementary to NA. In other words, the only thing they're gonna share is the origin. So they're not gonna share anything else other than the origin. And this space, because those are the, this is gonna be the space generated by the rows, 
I'm going to call it R A, or it's called R A. So the space generated by the rows of the matrix will be 100% 90 degrees with a null space. So if you know one, you can find the other. Not necessarily with the same rows, but you can find the other. If you know the null space, you can find this. If you find this, you can find this. It, it goes both ways. Hmm. And they are orthogonal. Boy, this gets, this can get even more complicated, but okay. How about RM? Well, RM is going to be split into two. One of them is going to be the null space, but not this null space because those are different vectors. The row vectors are not necessarily the same dimension as the column vector. So we cannot have an A anymore, but we will have an A transpose. So the null space of the transpose matrix is going to be um, one part. And by the way, this doesn't have to be non-zero. Um, if, well, let, let me come back to that in a moment. Um, and then the space generated by the columns is going to be in RM, you know, as many columns as you have, it doesn't matter how many. And that's going to generate the column space of the matrix or the space generated by the columns, we, which we're going to denote with C for column, R for row, the null space of the regular matrix, the null space of the um, tran transposed matrix. matrix. Um, now, if the matrix, so there's a special case. First of all, if you have an n by n matrix that is non-singular with, that has an inverse with an inverse. Okay, so a perfectly nice matrix. Then the null space is just gonna be, so NA of the matrix is just gonna be one point. That's it, the origin. And this is RN, nothing else. And everything else is gonna be R A. In other words, the rows are going to generate all of it. Now we're assuming we have a square matrix. Yep. On the other hand, R N is going to be generated also by the columns and the null space of the transpose is gonna be just one point, that's it. Just one point and that, nothing else in both cases. Yep, and again, the rows are gonna generate all of the space as well as the columns. The columns will generate all of the space. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a picture, um, yeah. So this part gets reduced down to a one point if we have um, this situation where we have an n by n matrix um, with an inverse. Yeah. There's one, before we finish the video, there's one more thing I wanted to, to get, to dive into. Okay. R4. What are the proper non zero subspaces of R4? Okay, so has the following a proper subspaces, uh, non zero subspaces. Okay, so we can have a line, a plane, 
I guess, uh, 3D space. So you can have a line, a plane, or a 3D space. By plane, we mean 2D. So if those are three separate cases, they're corresponding complements with complements. And the complement of a line is going to be a three dimensional space, 3D space. The complement of a 3D space is going to be a line. So we can make a table. And the complement of a plane is another plane. Yeah. The complement of a plane is a plane. Now, might just as well add two more cases. What is the complement of R to the four, which is sort of a different case because that, that is not a proper non-zero case. Uh, the, its complement is gonna be um, just the set with zero in it, the vector zero. And vice versa, if you start with zero, its complement, orthogonal complement is gonna be R to the four. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're in R4 and you are given two generators for a space U and we want to find the orthogonal complement of that, we, we better end up with two vectors. If we start with one vector, we better end up with three generators. If we start with three generators, we better end up with one generator. If you start with R to the four, then you don't have to do any work. You just say, well, this, the complement is zero. If you start with zero, the complement is all the other vectors. All right. So I think that, that that's it for, for this video.